till death do us part, we said. You got sick of me. You just dropped dead rather than break a promise. For God's sake. I know what you're thinking. Bored young woman at a funeral. Obviously unable to grasp the gravity of the situation or the fragility of life. Who's more interested in closing the door of a taxi after a night out than the lid of a coffin? Oh, I'm, I'm not a secretary. Or at least I'm not just a secretary. I'm a makeup artist, an event planner, a funeral director. <laughs> you think that I would get used to it? The crying. Oh, I'm also a murderer. Thank you, dear. You know, made this whole ordeal so much easier for all of us. I don't know how you do it. Of course, Mrs. O'Brien. It's my job to make you feel as comfortable as possible. If you need anything, I'll be right over there. a bad person. Really, I'm a torture terminator. It's just like a vet who euthanizes a horse with a broken leg. I help people. Terminal cancer, MS. I mean, I make sure that they suffer for as little time as possible. He was only 55. Heart disease. I couldn't bear to see him wither away and let Mrs. O'Brien go through all that heartbreak. So I thought it was best to just pull the band-aid off. I mean, it was weeks since I'd last embalmed a body. Then that's when I found my vocation. With all the yummy mummies and the rugby hunks moving in, nobody was dying. So I thought long and hard about the situation and this was my solution. Helping those in need while making a living. But you know, it's not about the money. Really, I'm a modern day Mother Teresa. He's gone, Nana. I know, love. But he's in a better place now. He'd only be suffering if he was still here. See? My job is necessary. And of course, it hurts me to see the families grieve. But I mean, I wasn't dealt the best hand in life either. Dad ran away with a 23 year old widow. And Mom was in no condition to take over the family business, so it was up to me. And I'm doing the best that I can. I mean, initially, I did find it hard. The whole Grim Reaper thing. But then when I thought of the sorrow the families would go through if I didn't do my job, well, it all became so much easier. So now, I go to Mass Weekly to find out who has the most urgent ailments. Then, I follow the patient home. I wait in my car to make sure that they've got no company. Then, I pick the lock. I walk in. I inject insulin into a small freckle. And voila, undiagnosed diabetes and death by hyperglycemia. You see, they die much faster if they've got no food in their stomachs because their blood pressure is already pretty low. But of course, Irish people love to eat, so it's usually a seizure, followed by quickly slipping into a coma and then just passing away hours later.
I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. He's the best looking corpse I've ever seen. Well done. We had to use super glue to shut his mouth and his arteries refused to drain. Well, he's such a handsome man. So peaceful. Sorry. I just need to take this. Is there anything I can get you, Mrs. O'Brien? Oh, no, love, I'm, I'm okay. No, I'm just trying to think about the positives. It's time to go. Now I can do all the things I never could do before. Nobody to hold me back. Unleashed from the ball and chain. 48 hours ago, she was lying in bed with the man that she's now planning a life of debauchery with us. I mean, does tack no longer exist? No. The girl's always asked me to go with them on holidays to Spain. I'm sure I never could. He always had something wrong with him. It wasn't his back, not his leg. And then heart disease. He was relentless. Now, finally, it's time for me to have some fun. You know, I've lost three pounds since he died. All those little triangular sandwiches overflowing out of the fridge and I'd never touched one of them. Mm. Mm. It's too sad, really. But won't I look good in my bikini in Spain? <laughs> you know, maybe I'll even find myself a toy boy. <laughs> your dad meet your stepmother? Now I'm going to kill Mrs. O'Brien. She'll have a short seizure, followed by a nice restful coma, and then she'll be reunited with her beloved husband. You know, Mrs. O'Brien, you're just not a very nice person. Call an ambulance, Poppy. Quick. It's just business as usual. <laughs> 